Welcome to my quick video on how to use Quail. Now, to clarify one little notation, there are two repositories that make up Quail. One is called Quail, the other is called Quail Add-on. If you're not a developer, all you need to worry about is Quail Add-on. Ideally, go to github.com forward slash Zachary forward slash Quail dash add-on. I'll link it in this video and you will go to the releases section on the right over here and you will see the latest release as of this recording was 221 this will constantly be updated all you do is click on it <clears throat> you get a download link on your browser and you start up blender i use 3.4 i believe it's been tested on 3.6 and it will be whatever the latest version of blender is once you're in Blender, you go to Edit, Preferences, and you go to the Add-on section. You click on Install, and you go to your Downloads. You will see your zip file there. You don't have to extract it. You just literally hit Install Add-on. The add-on gets installed, and you'll notice that it will not be enabled by default. You need to click it. And now that it's enabled, this does a few things. If you press the N key, which is a normal Blender, hotkey, you'll notice that this side pane appears. And inside there, you'll see EverQuest. If you click on it, it will show this little fast export option. And also you'll confirm the version of Quail that is currently running. So now that this is in, if you go to File and you go to Import, you will see a new option on the very bottom that says EverQuest Archive, EQG or S3D. If you click on this, you can target a EverQuest directory, find an EQG or S3D, and import it. Doing so, you will see on the right hand side that there is a bunch of objects that represent every single EverQuest asset that was inside of whatever that EQG was. I went ahead and went to texture view so you can see each of the models for this. And you can obviously isolate view by holding the air pressing the numpad front slash key, and you can see that it's being rendered. Uh, the thing that's pretty cool with blend or with quail is when you go into edit triangle mode you can click on each face and actually see if any flags are enabled for it uh, this also has some little features telling you how it's going to export another little thing so it's handy to keep open but of course pressing in you can hide and reveal that as needed uh, the flags particularly come in handy during uh, zone importing and review uh, but nevertheless when you are done with an asset, you can literally just go to File, Export, EQG, and target this into a new EQG. In this case, I'll put it to Downloads and just call it untitled.ekg. And ideally, you will not get an error like this, <laughs> but it isn't perfect. I think the Import Export feature set is a little uh, buggy. In fact, huge disclaimer in general, Quail's quite buggy. Uh, for another just quick test, here is a mesh that I'm going to go ahead and uh, just pop in here real quick. Just a blank blender scene with a single object. And this time, when we go to export, it's actually going to fail. Uh, and that's intentional. We can go ahead and just assume uh, it's going to likely fail because of no materials assigned and also because there's no triangulation happening. But I'll show you that. See? No materials found in scene. Please assign a material to at least one object. So if you go into materials and hit new, that actually alone is enough to be considered a material. You can actually change its color real quick. So we'll make it blue. Go to file, export, EKG. Go back to downloads, hit untitled, hit export. And then it says object cube has four vertices. Only triangles are supported. You can actually edit the object, go to uh, you know, edit mode, select all, and hit triangulate faces. That's one way to do it so that you have triangles. Another is you can just add a modifier of triangulate. And during export, it will apply the modifiers. So again, downloads, export, and we have success. Uh, and that's it. So it's essentially a bi directional uh, import exporter. For fun, let's go ahead and delete the scene, go to import. And let's see if we can import the untitled we just made. There you go. So that is a import of what was exported earlier. 
this also would work in game. You could go into, uh, yeah. And if you do inspect the object that we just uh, put in, let's go like to downloads real quick and double click the entitled, you will see that the name of the mod is actually reflecting the name of the object. So if we did rename this to, let's say, IT12345, and by the way, if you press N, go to EverQuest, you'll see what this model will be exported as. So if we go ahead and hit File Export and do Export again, then reopen the downloaded file. You can see now it's called IT12345. Same thing with materials. Whatever the material name is here is what it get exported to. Uh, what else? You can do some other cool tricks, like if you press uh, new collection, and let's say we call this IT23456, and we drag this object into here, and then we also make another object. All right, just uh, give an example. You'll notice as you select each of these objects, the model name that it'll export as is actually 23456. And the reason I do this is so that you can group collections and not have to merge everything into a single object. So as an example, we can make another cube. And we're going to call this cube alone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, GC1, GX, let's say negative 2. So now I've got three objects. When we export all this, uh, we're going to have issues because these aren't triangulated. Let's fix that real quick. Triangulate and triangulate. And as you keep exporting, another trick is if you're in object mode and you deselect all objects, you get this fast export option. In order for it to work, you do have to save the scene. So let's go ahead and save this real quick into downloads as Untitled Blend. And what we can export it as is just untitled.ekg. And then we can hit export and get an error, of course. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can figure out why. That's interesting. Again, errors are inevitable, unfortunately. Uh, it could be a face issue. In fact, I think that's what it is. For some reason, my uh, my exporter. But yeah, now it succeeded. So it usually gives you a warning about missing materials, but it didn't that time. But if we go inspect this new EQG that we generated, you'll notice that there are two mods. There's one that actually represents the collection, and there's another that represents the single object. So this geometry should be combined. Uh, we could actually use the EQ model viewer, so I don't have to go in game. This is a handy tool. I think it's EQ. No, this is the old S3 version. EQG model importer, I think, is what it is. So if we set this to our downloads directory, you can see here's untitled, and here's a preview. And you'll notice we have an object with two of the meshes combined, and then we have an object with the single plane, or the single cube. So it worked. Um, and you can obviously you know, set an image texture. Um, you can also generate one with the, uh, where is it at? Uh, why am I blinking here? Let's just do a brick texture. So we generated this brick texture. Obviously, the UV map's jacked up. We could do a quick tweak on that for fun. So select all this, do like a cube projection. And did we fix it? Mm. It's not very happy with this. Let's just do like a smart, smart fix that. Interesting. Why isn't that fixing it? I'm not 100% sure. For some reason, the material is only being assigned to one side. It may be because of how I created the material. Not fully sure on that, but regardless, we got these bricks, right? Let's see if we can go ahead and another trick is if you right click on export, you can say change shortcut or make your own and you can set up a key. Let's say like control shift E. And now instead of having to deselect in order to export, you can just hit control shift E and you get the message right here. Um, <laughs> I don't know if the, uh, uh, the brick texture is actually a supported variant. I hadn't tested that prior to this. Uh, in fact, let's just assign material again. Control Shift W, it, it is working. Cool. Now, if we refresh this, which unfortunately that works, 
we can see now that there's the two blue cubes and the solid white in the EQG model viewer, and uh, it would work in game too. But uh, yeah, so it does support importing quite a lot of built-in EverQuest assets. Uh, version four zones, which is basically everything after ROF2 causes an issue uh, during import. But majority of the zones other than the newer can just be imported and there's all the assets. Zones can be imported, however, they are um, kind of hit or miss specifically because there are like animations and bones and all these other data points that Quail does not fully have support yet for. But uh, like here, you can see there's some material mapping issues on this zone, but you do see all the geometry is imported and you can see all the different objects. So that's a bonus. Uh, and S3D, I think the very latest variant may have some issues that I need to clean up. But in theory, you can do the exact same flow with both S3D and EQG. Um, and we'll see if that's truly the case. Looks like it's actually crashing Blender. So that's, that's not a good sign. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely avoid S3Ds for the time being, but expect rapid patches. They're constantly coming in. And uh, yeah, enjoy Quell. It's a fun little exporter. You can use it for static NPCs. You can use it for static um items and we are working on bones animations layered textures there's all sorts of features for the time being it's more focused on eqg um bi-directional support but if you uh do need s3d we do have some partial support which apparently i've broken on the very last version so there you go there's my crash course enjoy <laughs>